The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terry. Welcome to OAA Now here on Sammy Terry, blog of the Dragons Insider, blog of Inside the OAA, and one of the hosts of which here is an Orient neighborhood television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud, those hearing us on YouTube, watching on YouTube, and watching on Orient neighborhood television. Ian, it's been a crazy week. You know what I mean? Pretty yeah, crazy. crazy week, and we've heard, I mean, we saw some finishes last week that you're kind of like, whoa, it tells you that the season is still wide open for many teams. Mm-hmm. We saw that COVID is still rearing its ugly head, and it's impacting some of these teams and the playoff picture and all that good stuff. So, yeah, there's a lot of things happening here in the OAA. Yep, and um, we got a surprise guest here for everybody here. Um, uh, um, yep. But we'll, let's do the round. Yeah, we'll get the to the round first? up first, then we'll get to our surprise guest. It's great to have a uh, guest in here as always. Yep. And um, let's, let's uh, if I can find the music, let's hit the roundup, shall mm-hmm. we? Yep. All right. It's the roundup. Week five, right? Week five already. In the books, it is officially fall, and we had some crazy finishes uh, last uh, Friday and Saturday. We had some OAA games that took place on a Saturday, right, Sam? Because of a power outage. Yep, do a power outage. A lot of crazy weather as well, but here we go. What happened? Bloomfield Hills taking on Farmington, taking down Farmington 41-14. C.J. Jackson 10 of 11 for 247, five TDs. Andrew uh, Sapersky, hope I'm saying his right, his name right. Three catches for 97 yards, two touchdowns for Bloomfield Hills. Crazy score there. Troy, what, what do they do? Hey, we're Texas talking about Troy. Are they for real? Hey, guess what? They just go pitch a shutout against Dearborn, uh, Dearborn Etzel Ford, 14 to nothing. Uh, we'll know a lot about them next week. <laughs> yes, we will. Darius uh, Whiteside, two receiving touchdowns for Troy. Uh, what is that? Five and zero for the first time since 1999. Like I said, I know a lot about them next week. When were you born, Sammy? Uh, 1987. <laughs> I was gonna say before you were born. Mm-hmm. Just kidding, of course. Avondale comes to life against Ferndale, 21 to zero. Ferndale was coming off a a week off due to COVID situation. Correct? I wonder if Jake Herzog. You think so? I don't. I wonder. All right. Well, it's good to wonder. Mm-hmm. All right. The the big win, at least in both of our eyes, that we saw that I went wow. Berkeley 31 to 20 over Troy Athens. Uh, Stavad Daniels four rushing touchdowns for Berkeley. Trey Vincent two touchdowns, one rushing, one receiving, and uh, Andre Sheldon receiving t- touchdown for Troy Athens. Big win for the Bears. Yes, it is. Harper Woods 34 27 over Detroit Country Day. Yes, good win for the Pioneers. Looking good at four and one right now. Now they don't play a game this week, which is really, really odd. And Tramac canceled their game last week. Uh oh. All right, Groves in, I guess it's an upset. Groves come back to life, 22-14 over Oak Park in overtime. Uh, Jay Magnum, big difference there. Adams continues to roll, 35-0 over Seaholm. Parker Pico, two passing touchdowns. Marco DeCerci, four-yard rushing touchdown. Max Seabor, 17-yard TD reception. Brady Prescore, an eight-yard TD reception for Rochester Adams. Offense oh. continues to churn for Adams. Love the fear of the fear. Fear of the fear, absolutely. Rochester 32 27 in the shocker over North Farmington. What? North blew this game. Alex Bueno, five total touchdowns, three passing, two rushing. Grant uh, Calcagano, I hope I'm saying his name right. Game winning 80 yard TD reception for Rochester. 203 total yards for the offense. That's, that's, in, that's yep. insane. Yep. Jesper Beeler, three rushing touchdowns for North Farmington. West Bloomfield, Lake Orion in a squeaker. Can we call it a squeaker? 28-21, West Bloomfield wins. Mm-hmm. Dillian Tatum, two touchdowns. Samaj Morgan, a touchdown reception for West Bloomfield. Uh, Billy Robertson, two rushing touchdowns. Kyler Carson and, uh, with one rushing touchdown for Lake Orion. Wayne played much better in that game. Defense showed up finally. Mm-hmm. Clarkston, Oxford. Was this a shocker? Clarkston, 20 Oxford, 17. Oxford's playing much better right now. Oh, they have confidence. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah, they have confidence. 
Ethan Clark, two rushing touchdowns. Mike DePillo, 77-yard passing touchdown to uh, Mike Hind for Clarkston. Stony Creek, 21-14 over a and John Fogler, two touchdown runs. Eric Booth had a TD reception uh, from Jacob Best for Stony Creek. What can you say? What can you say about them? They belong in the red. They do, and that was a good win for Stony Creek. Yeah, they're homecoming, too. Hey, you got to win on homecoming, right? Yes, you do. Hey, big games. We're going to discuss them. We're going to break them down, and that's the roundup. Wow. Wow. Yeah, wow. some amazing uh, turn of events there, especially with Groves, mm-hmm. among other things. So we got a guest here, obviously. So let's bring yeah, him let's on. hope it's working. Let's hope it's working. You know, <laughs> let's bring him on here. We got the um, our surprise guest this week, who's coming off a monster win against Troy Athens. We got the coach of the Berkeley Bears, Coach Sean Shields. Coach, welcome back to the podcast. Hey, fellas, thanks for having me on. Yep, um, a lot to look at, obviously. Um, that win against Athens, of course, um, that is a monster win. I know you've been around Hurley Field, and they've seen their fair share of monster wins, um, obviously. So um, talk about that game with Troy Athens, um, how that game went, and how you guys are, and how you guys played in that game. Uh, they, they came out ready for us, um, you know, and – uh, throughout the season, you know, our defense has kind of carried us uh, in most games, but our offense woke up in the first half and kept us in it. Uh, they were moving the ball pretty well on us, um, you know, but luckily for us, our, our offense stepped up and uh, held us in there in the first half. Uh, we made some adjustments going in the second half, moving some safeties, uh, depth around, and uh, switched uh, our, our linebackers, their strengths, and um, you know, the offense kept it clicking and moving. Savad had a great game. The old line played their butts off, and then the defense held the shutout in the second half, and we, we put it all together and um, came out with a great result, showed, uh, showed a lot of fight in our boys for being able to come back down for the first time at halftime, and uh, uh, boys are excited, coaching staff's excited, and uh, glad that we have a solid team this year. Talk about Savad. I mean, like, of course, um, your normal one night, Brandon Peacher, of course, he said you said he got hurt, and then um, Savad's really done well and taken over. Um, now you expect to have um, Peacher coming back and moving him around. You know what I mean? So talk about the development of Savad for you guys. Yeah, so Savad, he's uh, part of that junior class that you know we we had an all freshman team a couple years ago, and you know he's he's a patient runner. He you know he's not. Uh, you know, a big kid, kind of like Brandon, but he's not afraid of contact, great balance. And, you know, when Brandon got hurt week one, he broke a bone in his foot. And, uh, you know, we, we said, you know, Savad, your, your number's getting called, and he's ran away with it, catching the ball, running the ball, good patience. Um, you know, we're excited to, to have Brandon back, and, you know, we, we kind of have a three-headed monster almost like we did last year. We got another kid, Myron Dover, who's a junior, all three kids can run the ball, and behind our old line, they're going to be really dangerous. That's a good sign, of course, um, obviously. But it also gives you guys some flexibility, especially with that three-headed monster. You can move at least maybe one or two guys to the defensive side of the football. It gives you guys that depth, you know what I mean? So that is that has to be a good thing for you guys. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, Brandon gives us some depth uh, now playing, being able to play some linebacker. Um, he's also going to be able to move and play some fullback for us in the eye. And he's a great lead blocker. Um, you know, um, our, uh, on our defense, uh, I want to say we have seven or eight guys that are one way guys and the same thing on offense that, you know, the depth for us this year has been huge. Um, you know, it, it's, it's great that guys can come off the field, get a blow and, uh, we've got moving pieces. If someone goes down, it's not like we're worrying about a kid that's first year playing football. We actually have legitimate starters backing up our starters. Talk about the blue race right now. Of course, you guys are in the middle of that. Um, you got Bloomfield Hill sitting at five and old Troy's at five and old, and now Athens and you guys are at four and one. Um, obviously of course you do have Troy on the schedule. Um, and then Bloomfield Hills, they got some tough games looming this week, looming, especially with Troy Athens this week. So talk about, the blue race a little bit, you know, in your eyes. Um, you know, this, it's, 
it's great competition. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, at, at media day, we all like to say the OAA is the best, you know, conference in, in Michigan and it's showing from red, white, and blue. Um, you know, we're picking up our end with, with so many quality teams fighting it out, you know, uh, Bloomfield, we, we, we struggled and to move the ball against them. Um, you know, and they've showed why they're, they're, they're undefeated. Um, you know, we're, we're going to need help from either Athens or Troy or somebody to, to hopefully knock those guys off and give us a chance at our first league title. I think since like 87. Wow. Um, that was, yeah, yeah I was born. Thank you. So yeah, me too. Me, <laughs> really? me too. Man. Me and you are just, great. Just brought that yeah, up, I'm, I'm a December 87 kid. I'm a so. February 87 kid myself. Nice. Well, look at you. You're an old man. Kid. Yeah, you are. Um, oh, we're you, both forever young. You got him, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's great because it's something that's preparing us for the playoffs. So that, like, every week we have to be prepared to face a quality opponent. And, you know, it's it's great to see it in the league. And you've got some of the, the top teams in the blue fighting it out now. And none of us can slip up or else we can kiss the league title goodbye. And obviously, when you look at, of course, the postseason, um, you've got some experience going down to Warren, playing Warren Mott last season, of course, um, playing the Division One competition. Um, t- talk about, you know, playing against some D1 schools, obviously, to get guys prepared for the postseason. No, it's great. I mean, um, you know, I think our, our enrollment's around like 1,300 or something like that, but we're going against some schools that have, if not 2,000, close to 2,000 kids in the school. And, you know, it, my first two years, that would have been, you know, we, we would have been fighting an uphill battle on that. But now that we've got the kids coming out in the program, fighting these bigger schools and getting wins against them and, and having that competition every day, it's just going to prepare us for, you know, if we have to see Groves or LaSalle or, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, uh, or Rice or whoever it may be, you know, in the playoffs, this this schedule going against schools these size is doing nothing but preparing us for those games in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Ian, you have something to say, Coach? Here? Well, we were talking, I mean, um, we're talking playoffs, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, it's, uh, I wanted to bring this up. We kind of talked before we were on the air is the MHSA got together. Um, last week, I believe it was the ADs, uh, and talked about uh, reviewing the playoff structure. And you're talking about playoff points, playing the D1 schools, and really building that resume for the playoffs under the current system. Um, any thoughts on uh, if they went back to the everybody gets in or keeping the playoff system? I know it's the, the, the points is the first year, right, this year that yeah. we're doing this. So we're still kind of uh, assessing it. But we'd like to have your input on your thoughts on um, – either one or the other or whatever um yeah i mean i i think i was on here either last time or time before and my feelings just stay the same that you know i'm i'm for everybody making it in um you know uh, what's what's the harm of giving kids another you know game of football or another opportunity to play football and then with the with the playoff point system, I, we we saw it firsthand that there's still flaws with this. You know, we lost the Ferndale game this year because they had a, a, a COVID case happen. And I reached out to six different schools. I even reached out to Chelsea. And, wow. You know, they're a, they're a powerhouse. Yeah. You know that. Three. And I told my kids like, look, we don't know when this is this this is three miles down the road from us. We might wind up not being able to play. Yeah. We just wanted to play a game. And, you know, um, for whatever reason, schools just said that, no, we're good. We're not going to play. Um, which, is, know, which is so it, surprising. The more games, I mean, it can only help you even uh, like we saw. Who else was it, Sammy? Didn't play Royal, Royal Oak. Oak. Didn't play and, last week. And they didn't pick up another uh, pick opponent. Another, and there were opponents out there. And you can get, you can get points for a win or a loss, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's how it kind of goes. So reflect on that, Coach. Well, and that's, you know, that's, we were thinking with, you know, the Ferndale loss of, you know, yeah, we would get the, what, what is it? 60 points or 55 points, whatever it is for division two win. But we also know that Eric's squad is struggling a little bit down there this year. And we looked at it as, Hey, we can play some teams that are either, most of them are lower than us, but they're good quality teams in their divisions. We wouldn't necessarily get the, the points that we would for the win against Ferndale, 
But if we if we get that win, we would also get all those bonus points for whatever games they win. So we yeah. looked at it as, hey, what's the chance to better us here? You know, and and all credit to Eric. You know, this is why I love Eric. We were on the phone Friday still trying to make something work out to where we could play. So it wasn't just playoff points based. We wanted a game. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But it, it's to to me, I think the the worry with the playoff points or the six six and in and all this. I think that if teams weren't worrying about that and they knew they were going to have a playoff, uh, they were going to get a chance to make a run in the playoffs, we would have had a game. I, I honestly, truly think someone would have said, you know what, forget it. We'll, we'll play a game against coach, you know, and I, we, I don't see a, a, a light at the end of the tunnel for the COVID deal right now. And I think that that would solve a little bit of that issue towards, you know, just making sure kids get games if there's a cancellation for something or some along those lines. No one be worried about playoff points to make it in. Mm-hmm. I'm I, I still stand with let's just make it in. Kids get extra football yeah. and we can make sure we get games scheduled during the season. And it's just surprising that a team would say, now nah, we're good. Because like you're mentioning, they said you don't know. I mean COVID's still here and well who says two weeks down the line that you can't play a game, right? And it's taken away from you. So to say no to a game, I just blows my mind. I, I <laughs> and well, I, no, I hope it's, it's I hope it's not for points. You know, just to say, oh well, we don't want to hit the get dinged on the points mm-hmm. uh, because you guys are, you know, a quality team and people look at the Bears and go, well, I don't know, you know. But it's just, I just blows my mind that you wouldn't want to get that game and after what we dealt with last year. Well, and and I, I'm with you. I, I just I, I I'm not here to take play or forfeit wins or anything yeah. like that. I want to coach. My kids want to play. Yeah. And and I I've, I've read and I've heard the argument for the you know the everybody in deal as well. You'll get blowouts this and that. <laughs> yeah. And I told you the last time. I think if you ask any of those kids, you know whether it's you're going to get blown out or or you have a fighting chance. If you're going to give them a chance to play another game. Ask those seniors that might have that's their last game. They're going to want to play the game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, they've got a, there's there's a pride thing. You know what I mean? I know kids yeah. want to play. You know what I mean? And I know we want to coach, want to play. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's the thing. You know what I mean? Obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, of course. Um, when you look at your final three games, obviously for you guys, of course, the Troy game stands out. So talk about that game a little bit. I know you got Avondale this week. Um, and that's a, that's a very interesting game. But you got the Troy game coming up, I believe, in two weeks, and you have a little bit of Clarenceville and Pontiac. So, so talk about your the rest of your schedule throughout the rest of the way. Um, you know, for for this week, you know, Avondale. It's uh, right before you guys called me. I'm sitting here watching some film <laughs> on them. They're a homecoming game this week. Uh, you know, I, I preach to the kids. No one likes being scheduled for a homecoming game, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just extra incentive. To, for them to come out and and you know take take a win from us and they're coming off a big win against uh ferndale last week um you know from what i've heard they've got uh i think their quarterback's coming back hey, um, Herzog, you know i was, I was wondering uh, about that, that that's that's the rumor right now is that mm-hmm. he's gonna he's gonna suit up against us um you know and it's it's if, if we play the way that we've played all year and, you know, show up on both sides of the ball, we'll, we'll have a, a – we'll be fine. But Avondale's got extra incentive to come in here. They're coming mm-hmm. off a win. They're our homecoming. You know, it's not like last year. There is a target on our back. You know, mm-hmm. so everyone wants – everyone wants a shot at taking us down. I, I, we saw it last week with Athens. Mm-hmm. You know, I watched them play against Royal Oak, and, you know, things were a little shaky. But all of those things that were shaky, the turnovers, all that, that wasn't an issue with them against us. They were yeah. up and ready for us. Mm-hmm. So we've got to be ready for Avondale, the same thing. Um, you know, Clarenceville out of, out of conference. Um, I think they're undefeated right now. Um, so that's another good quality opponent that, that we That'll have. That'll be a really interesting game, especially with you guys having to go down to Livonia. That's not easy. Yeah, no, that's going to be a nice fun bus trip for us down there. <laughs> um, you know, I, I uh, you know, I, I'm glad to see that they're having success and that it's just another game that's going to prepare us for the playoffs, um, facing quality opponents. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Troy, um, I actually know a couple of the guys on the staff there. Um, you know, uh, Blackwell, their old line coach was over on Sakura staff back, uh, back then. And, you know, we've been texting back and forth. We're looking forward to that game. Hopefully, um, you know, both our records are still good going into that and we're fighting for the title. Mm-hmm. 
you know, that's, that's going to be a big litmus test for us for how we're going to be in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Pontiac end of the year, you know, uh, coach Wade, I got, I got respect for that, man. Uh, you know, he's, he's trying to do the best he can over there and, and keeping kids with the program. I know that, uh, they had to drop last week and rumors they might have to drop this week too oh, no. because oh, of, no. uh, COVID issues. Yeah. Um, you know, but, uh, the, the thing for them is they're going to be opening their brand new stadium, I think week eight, mm -hmm. and then they're closing out the year at that brand new field and stadium. And I'm sure they're going to want to try to get a, a W that night against us to finish out their season. And, you know, that, that, that program is, is starting to show some life and, you know, we got to be prepared for them because they've always got good athletes. You got to be impressed with the 40 points they put up against Stockbridge. I mean, like, you know, that's a sign of improvement. You know what I mean? With Pontiac, obviously they had a, it yeah, came, young man it came to life. life. Yeah, it came to life. So, you know, that's a good direction for them right now. Oh, I, I mean, look at it, Sammy. I mean, I I was talking to my coaching staff um, uh, about it on Saturday at film. You know, Pontiac, the previous two years, had put up 40 points total. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I know. Right? Like, they did. And so now you see with Ken what he's doing over there. He's getting guys to buy in. I he, he, I. I I even heard him say, you know, it's going to be a rough season for them, but they're showing signs of improvement, and that's the biggest thing. We had to go through that, too, over at Berkeley and getting kids to buy in, and I think they're starting to see it. They've, they're putting up points. Um, I think they put up 20 against Avondale, you know. So, um, you know, it's it's encouraging to see that, and it's only going to make the league better. Yep. yep. Um, one final thoughts here before, you, before I let you go, Coach. Um Obviously, the game with Avondale, that's, that's a big, big game for you guys. It's your homecoming. I mean, like, have you talked to your kids about not letting the homecoming hype get, get to them? You know what I mean? Just being careful. Yeah. No, we've, we've preached that as a staff to the boys that, you know, don't let the distraction of homecoming happen. You know, coaching powder puff during the week <laughs> and everything else. You know, all the craziness that yeah. comes with homecoming. You know, the kids see what's in front of them and, and the type of special season we could have right now. And luckily, I've got a very, very good senior group that, that has their head on their shoulders and the juniors are following in behind them. Um, you know, the they're excited for the atmosphere. We're hoping that it's going to be kind of like what it was back, uh, you know, during the score days where we've got the stands packed. People have to park blocks away to come to a game. You I know? remember and, that. Awesome. Yeah, you know, those those were good days, and we we saw it the other night against Athens. We're hoping that it'll be even bigger against Avondale. But our guys got their heads on the shoulders pretty well. You know, a couple kids texting me about film already nice. you know, before we even start practice today. So it's I, I think the boys are locked in, and as long as we just play our our brand of football, run run the ball, you know, physically, and then just play lockdown defense, we'll we'll be all right this week. When you're locked in, good things happen. Um, coach. Coach Sean Shields, um, thank you for joining me and Ian this week here on the podcast. Um, hope much be best luck rest of the way, and um, be rooting for you rest of the way. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you having me on. Stay safe. Yep, you too. You too. Good luck, yep. Coach. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Um, obviously, you yeah. know, that was a good one. You know what, what I mean? I mean, they're going to – I don't even know how to begin this statement. It's like their season, like he said, at the end there – a special season. They could have that special season. And it's all coaches wish for that special special season. They work mm -hmm. so hard to try to develop that. But you can't plan for a special season, no. right? No. You hope for it. You hope for it. And they're on the cusp of having one. Mm -hmm. Right? But that that division, Sammy, it's about what you said at the beginning. It is a dogfight. It is. It and is. All three divisions are. It, 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 they are, and but you see, it's just a dogfight mm -hmm. week after week. So, um, yeah, it's. I'm, I'm glad he could come on share that. It's good that they have depth. I mean, we talked about a it's couple years ago. He had depth. hardly anybody. It's but. huge. You know what I mean when you look at. It. Obviously, when you look at, and then you look at the division they're in. Obviously, Bloomby Hills, Troy, they're off to really good starts, but. On Bloomy Hills' case, beside the Berkeley game and the Kettering um, start, they really haven't impressed me. I know yeah. C.J. Jackson's a very good quarterback, but until you play somebody, you know what I mean? You know, they're going to get Athens this week, but then they still got to play Troy. But you need to pass the eyeball test with them, you know what I mean? And well, then yeah. Troy, obviously, with them, you know, 
they won six and seven, but <laughs> but that loss was to West Blue on the playoffs. So yes, you know. So I am curious to see, especially with these three. I mean, include Troy Athens. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Can they make a deep run in the postseason? I mean, when I look so at so you're already looking beyond the uh, I'm looking divisional beyond race. The divisional race, but but when you look, especially the big three, do you think that Bloopy Hills, Troy, Troy Athens should play the big boys like the big like <laughs> you look at playing like the likes of the northern schools like Lake Orion, Oxford Clark. Should they West play them? Should they play them? At, in a playoff setting, you mean? Because if they play them in a playoff setting, you know it's not going to end well. No, mm-hmm. and but you don't know that. I yeah. mean, we've seen things, crazier things, mm-hmm. right? Like last year, of course, Troy up saying Bloomfield Hills. Yes. That yeah, we've nuts. seen it, and Oak Park doing what they did, what right? They did. yeah. So, um, but again, this is the, the – should they play the big boys? If, if that's how it plays out, they they should play them. Because but, they should play. But you're not going to sit – we can't control who's what and who's playing whom. Mm-hmm. Um, you leave that up to the seating committee, right? Right. But, uh, you know, going back to what Coach was talking about and these playoff points and this whole new system. It's instrumental. W- well, it is. And you're also seeing the cracks and the issues with this new system – where teams are bypassing, saying we just won't play, because it could impact the playoff points. It situation. could impact the playoff point system. Also, there is, you know, now which I, I just it like I said to him, or, you know, said to him, it's like it blows my mind that a team would say, yeah, we're just not going to play this week. I just don't. It. And I know it could be taken are, away just like that, yeah, right? It could be taken away like that. You know what I mean? So yeah, give it, the it opportunity. Just, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's crazy. It is. I mean, like and um. You know, and I and I commend, you know, I know Royal Oak, I heard, tried to find a game last week. Yeah, and I'm not, like, ripping on Royal Oak or anybody. They tried to find they a game. To find They're a trying game. to find – they mm-hmm. want that game. Mm-hmm. They want to get those kids playing. But for other teams to say, nah, maybe they're afraid they'd lose or whatever. If you're or, a Division three or a two and you want to – and for me, my suggestion would be, you know, play Division one. You know what I mean? Play Division one. you know, because you'll get those points even if you lose, you know, but if yeah. you win – that's oh, monster points. Oh, huge, yes. You know, so. So now we're playing the points game. Yeah, now we're playing the points <laughs> game. And but the, the encouraging thing, and, you know, regardless if we stay with this system or they're going to change it or tweak it or whatever, I'm glad at least the MHSA is talking about it. Mm-hmm. Right? It's not, hey, this is this is what it is, and they brought a whole bunch of people together mm-hmm. looking at the positives and negatives. There's a really good article written up on it. Um, M Live, I think, had it. Mm-hmm. And that really stood out to me. And we, don't, we haven't really talked since the last podcast. Right. And, um, but yeah, it, I know I, 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 we still want to talk about these teams and these games, and right. I don't want to dwell on the MHSA. Hey, you know, we get tired of talking about those guys. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting that it's, it's how it is impacting the teams and who's selecting to play or not yep. play or, yep. and the outcome, how it, it does impact teams like, you know, Royal Oak, or let's Berkeley. say Berkeley wants to play somebody and they can't. Right. So it's just, it's just crazy. This is, is a, this is a wild season. Going it is. It's, and it is, you know, and the other, we got to talk Rochester, you know, yes. Rochester. This is big, a team. Big win. Yeah. Against a quality opponent like North farm. Oh, absolutely. And, I'm going to talk North first before we talk okay. about it. North's got a huge <laughs> defensive problem. 62 points allowed in the last two weeks. That's not yeah. that's not a John Herstein defense. I mean, where was that team from when they played Farmington, Lake Orion, and Grove? Yeah. They haven't been the same since that Oak Park disaster where they were up 17 nothing. I yeah. mean, ever since... They were up seventeen nothing in that game. It's like the floodgates it's open. It's like the floodgates open. Yeah. So I don't know where the problems are right now. When you describe North Farmington, and they got a big one looming this week. They got uh, Adams uh, coming. Yeah. It's Ron Holland. Big, big one is an understatement. That's a must win for them. Yeah. Because, and you. Look and at, if you're looking at that defense, you have Adams coming in. What have we seen, and Adams? Run that veer. Well, what have we seen? They're packing on the points. Mm-hmm. They have. They can score. 
North's got some issues they got to fix. And then let's go on the flip side. Rochester. Yeah. yeah. Big win. Inside the city rivals. <laughs> this is a good football team. Yeah. You know? They just have a hard time with uh, what the inner city rivals. The guy down the street and the guy across town. <laughs> what the team off Tinkin and Sheldon and the um, ones off of Adams and Tinkin. Yeah. That's, that's intriguing. But when you look at Rochester, Connor Sazelan, 203 total yards of all. That is wild. That's nuts. Yeah, and, and I think you, I picked uh, North Farmington to take that one. I think it was a really close one. It was close. But uh, Rod, it flipped the other way. And then you look at Alex Blano, the way he's yeah. been playing. I Five mean, like, total TDs. Mm-hmm, including the game-winning 80-yard touchdown. I have to see that. I, I hope that was recorded. I got. I, I know Jeff Corn of the D-Zone uh, has that. Has a I highlight? Will, I, will send, I will send you the link. I have to see that highlight because there's nothing like that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And um, especially with what they had to go through. And that's what you're saying. I didn't even know they, they didn't even play at home because the power was Yeah, out. because power outage. Obviously, with the windstorm, with the um unexpected windstorm that yeah. occurred on um Tuesday and um Wednesday. And, and lasted into Wednesday. Lasted yeah. into Wednesday. And then all of a sudden, like. Four inches of rain. It four, I, I thought it will be a <laughs> rainstorm. I didn't expect a power outage. You know what I mean? Yeah. A windstorm. I didn't expect a windstorm. So they played where again? Stony. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, they're familiar with the the the, the stadium, so it, but you're not at your home right home, not your home stadium. Field. Not your home stadium. It was a Saturday afternoon, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's. But they but they showed that they can that not be distracted by something like that. Go out they and play overcome, a solid opponent. Right, you can overcome it and t- take care of business. Yeah, you can overcome it. You can over. I mean, like you can overcome it. You can you handle adversity. I mean, what I like about this Rochester team, and they handle adversity real well. Yeah. They really, really do. I mean, they what, got experience. Eric Brunner's done a wonderful job with that team. What's the next step for Rochester, though? We we know their weaknesses. We see that. It's the city rivals. They've got to win against them. I mean, like, obviously, for Rochester, you know you can beat teams outside your area. Yeah. It's the problem is the teams that are battling in your community, you know. You look at Stony Creek, you know, what they've been doing. And then you look at what Adams, Adams, we know what they've been doing. Yes. So when you really look it's at. like, Can they make that leap to that that's next, the thing. Can that they make next that, level? That next level step. Can they make that? You know, I know that you've heard the 26 straight years they've lost <laughs> at, games. They lost Adams. Yeah. I mean, and then losing to Stony Creek on a heartbreaking touchdown this year. I mean, like, that's the next step. They had the tools. They had the quarterback. They had the running back. They had mm-hmm. the receivers. They had the defense. Yeah. I would say right now, Rochester. Do you think it's between the years at this point? I think it's between the years at this point. Because I think when you look at Rochester, I think there's that time that they could get Adams. There's that time they could get Stony Creek. Yeah. You know? But they are making strides and big-time strides. I mean, this team might be the most dangerous team in the white, and that's saying a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me right now, when I look at the white right now, they're probably the second best team behind Adams, and that's saying something. Yes. You know, people look at, obviously, Groves with their last two games where they won. Obviously, Jaden Magnus has been a huge difference there in that one. Um, Oak Park, we don't know about them. (laughs) Yeah. Um. I mean, that was a tight one, 22-14 OT. Yep, D. Holmes had some struggles. Um, but And then North Farmington, obviously, we talked them. I mean, you know, Jasper Beeler is basically the one that's carrying that team right now, and that's not a good thing. Where's Aaron Rice at, and where is Ryan Shelby at? That's, the, that's what I want to know if you're Coach John Hurst at. Where are those three guys? Where yeah. are those two guys at? Um. Let's go from the white to the red. I mean, obviously. Some wild games. Oh, yeah. All three of them. Um, all three of them decided by seven points or less. Yeah. And uh, who do you want to talk about first? We could. We go with Stony A and T first. Okay. I mean. Stony takes down A and T by a touchdown. A and T to me is a. A and T from being on the home, being at home, being on the road, much different. Day and night. They, they're like, they're like. Jekyll and Hyde. Jekyll and Hyde. <laughs> Jekyll and Hyde basically on the um you know, like on the road they just they struggle. I mean, yeah. 
Now, I got to give Stony Creek a lot of credit here, especially the running back, John Fogle, their wide receiver, Eric Boos. But I got to give their offensive coordinator a lot of credit for playing that style of offense that slow it down, basically say, you know what, you keep your you keep the you keep the quarterback, you keep a, a guy like Isaiah Marshall off, off the, field, the field, you know, and then you got to win that. You yeah. got to win with that style. And then you have a good defense led, of course, by Gary Griffith, you know what I mean, yeah. who's done a masterful job with that yep. defense. I mean, Th- like. That is Stony Creek running their system mm-hmm. perfectly, mm-hmm. right? And we've seen uh, ball, contr- years. B- ball control, burn the clock, limited possessions, churn, 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 and it just don't give the other team an opportunity. And we, if you and if you want to beat them, you have to execute. Absolutely. And know? and they got in the end zone, right? Yeah. So we've seen them in years past where they're turning, turning, couldn't score, mm-hmm. turnover, whatever. But this time, you know, we know they're a different beast. They are. That's the armor up culture. It is. Every time they come in, you better be ready. And but that also flips to the the opponent. You have to execute as well because you may mm-hmm. give up that ball and not might not see it again for it again. for the uh, second half of another quarter. I mean, mm-hmm. it could be gone that quickly. And that's what makes that Lake Orion game with them really interesting. Absolutely, that is a dangerous game for Stony Creek. I think so because Lake Orion is hungry, especially after their um, performance what against through? what they've been through, but also the performance against West Bloomfield. They played much they, better against. They West rose Bloomfield. up to their. They Are played the, much opponent. better. They played much better against West Bluefield. Only issue I have with them is their penalties. They've got to clean that up. Which, and then, has, which have been an issue which over the last been an two issue seasons. Or last, yeah. Yep. And then you got to look at obviously the problem that Lake Orion's had has been defense, but they were much better. I think yeah. a lot of that was they got a couple guys yeah. back. You know, Joey D came back. Yeah. Ethan Strand came back. Patrick Golan came back. I mean, Lake Orion's a much different team. When those three guys play, you know, I wonder if they would have made a difference in the Oxford game. You know what I mean? But I, I, I'm glad you brought up Oxford. I don't know. Oxford looks like they're on a mission. They're they, playing better than what they, they have. Last three weeks. They have confidence. Last but, three weeks. You yeah. know, I'm going to be honest with you with Oxford. I mean, despite their win-loss record, they have gotten better and better. And better. Would you want to go up against them in the first round playoff matchup? If it's the Betty Ross, no. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, these guys, Coach Line, he's building something over there really quickly. And they well, gave. I think a lot of that's the senior experience, too. It is. Too. It is. But still, it, it, ha- it's, it is happening, right? Mm-hmm. And they gave Clarkson everything they could handle. Mm-hmm. And um, they were leading them in the fourth quarter. Yes. They were uh, leading listeners them. might not know that. They were leading him in the fourth quarter, and then it took a Ethan Clark two-yard rushing touchdown just to for Clarkson to escape. Yeah, that game. escape. That's and it was on perfect. their homecoming too. It was on Ox's homecoming too. Yeah, but that was virtually an escape for Clarkson. This was your mulligan. <laughs> this was your mulligan. Yeah, especially you got Lumen this week. Yeah, but with Oxford, you're looking at them. I mean, where else do they get a W? What, the remaining, I don't know the remaining schedule. Southfield's this week for them. That's a must-win game. It, it, it is absolutely a must-win game because, mm-hmm. yeah, they took down Lake Orion. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, it, their schedule is brutal. I'm going to say the toughest. Yeah. If not one gotta of play, the toughest. You got Rochester Chippewa Valley on there yeah, still. Yeah, still. You still got to play them. Um, you know, you still got Rochester Chippewa Valley Are on they, there. And it's one of these teams that you see, uh, I just mentioned, would you want to meet them in the first round of the playoffs? They might not get there. No. And that would be, that's. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate because they are starting Especially to come with on. the strength of schedule component, yes. obviously. And then you look at, um, you look at the schedules that Lake Orion, Oxford, Southfield. Yeah. Um, I mean, West Bluefield. Murders Row. Yes. Murders Row. And Oak Park even. Murders Oak Row. Oak Park, yes. I mean, and the fact that you base your schedule off, you know, playing these tough teams, you know what I mean? It should get you in the playoffs. But, but even it doesn't. If, but even if you, I mean, you got to have five wins almost. You got to have at least right? almost four or five wins yes. to get in the playoffs, you know, with that strength. And you got to have some sort of upset thrown in there, especially if you're limping in, you know, with one win or let's say Oxford, they got. 
what one win, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're one and right? four. Right, so they have to. F- every game's a must win for them now to be considered, even though their schedule is just so their brutal. Their schedule is so brutal because you know, and you look at everybody else's schedule. You know, you know, with those teams in the red, yeah. obviously, you know, as I mentioned earlier, those four teams' schedule is like beyond yeah murder. It's brutal. So if we're looking at Oxford, they're on the rise, right? Yes. I mean, they look really good. Mm-hmm. And they're building something pretty solid up there. Mm-hmm. If there is a team right now, I would say in the yeah. red that's trending right yes, now. Yes, that's, that's Oxford's trending up. The team that's trending down, people are going to say I'm a little surprised about this, is Southfield. Mm. Because if they lose to Oxford, they still got to play Rouge. Yeah. You still got to play, they got to play Oak Park. I mean, that's not an easy slate for them. No. And I don't know if I see a win in, in, in there for a and I just don't. So, and, so if that's the case, a and t is on the downward trend. I think they're in some trouble. Or I they're in trouble. I think they're in some trouble. The red flag's waving. The siren's going off. I think there's off. some sirens going off a little right. bit. I think with Lake Orion, I said with them last week that they were in some trouble. Yes. But, you know, last week, you know, they – Saw some signs, a little bit of life, except their offense in the first half looked beyond horrendous. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But I gotta give a lot of credit to West Bluefield's defense. I mean, which we know is solid. Yeah, we know it's right? solid. But Lake Orion, I mean, as far as playoff consideration is considered, I mean, they have it, to it, win out. I think for them, yeah. they have to win out, and they have. To, and it starts this week with Stony Creek. If they do not beat Stony Creek, then playoffs are out the window. Yeah. But if they win against Stony Creek and beat Parkston and beat Celine and beat Is it, oh, it's tough sledding. It's heavy. It's tough sledding. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, and it's Clarkston on the road. And it's Clarkston on the road. That makes it worse. So they gotta find something. They gotta find they gotta go they gotta dig deep in their souls, you know what I mean? To basically, you know, to and this team can do it. I mean, the question is going to be is, do they have enough time? Yeah. That is the big I question. have a feeling that time is slipping. Time is it's slipping. either slipping or it's pretty much gone. Mm-hmm. Do um, they have enough time? Yeah. That is the big question. Yeah. And can they make that, Im- for Lake Orion, can they make that improvement? Quickly. I mean, it has to be. It has to be it quick. has to be quick. It the has urgency to has to be off it has the charts. To be off the charts now. It yeah. has to be for this team to turn it around. Urgency has to be there. Let's see what happens. Yeah, Man. Let's go to week. Let's go to the picks this week. Obviously. All right, we're at forty-two, so we got plenty of time. Ooh, Actually, nice. forty-three. Ooh, First nice. time we aren't up against the clock. I know. Isn't and it? we had an interview with uh, an Coach interview. Shields. You know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, if you're just joining us and you missed it, uh, Coach Shields from the Berkeley Bears was in talking about his team and the big win over Athens mm-hmm. and uh, his upcoming schedule. So go ahead, hit rewind if you missed it or you came in midway. Yep. Obviously, um, we got to talk, obviously, Harper Woods a little bit. They don't play this week. They could get an opponent this week, you know. Yeah, they actually have a bye. Like, they it's, it's do. scheduled in. Uh, no, it wasn't scheduled in. Oh, it wasn't in scheduled in? And Tramit canceled. Oh, I didn't know that. It sounded so like it Harper, was scheduled in. Harper okay. Woods has been really rolling, obviously, with the play of Vinny right. Bruce. Um. Well, they're scoring points. They're scoring points, but they're giving up points, which is a problem. I mean, the thing, the problem I have with Harper Woods right now, when I look at that team, is defensively they're still giving up way too many points. Mm. They're scoring in bunches, but they're giving up bunches. So that to me is a big concern when I look at Harper Woods. They don't have a game this week, but that could change. You know what I mean? Like somebody, if I would recommend, like let's say, if a this is my own opinion. If and I don't <laughs> it's Coach always Shields, your opinion. <laughs> and I know Coach Shields said in, in, in the interview, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. That you know that um that it is a possibility, you know what I mean, that Pontiac might have to cancel again. Yeah, that, you know which I mean? is unfortunate. unfortunate. Oh my. So if I'm Troy, you know, let's say hypothetically, if Pontiac were to cancel again, then I, if I'm Troy, I would suggest playing Harper Woods because they're an OA opponent. They might be a, they might be a team that you got get accustomed to playing. You know what I mean? Because you're gonna have to eventually see them. Yeah. 
So that's a good idea, Sam. That may be, you know, yeah. but that's hypothetically if Pontiac were, you know, if they if, had to cancel. You know yeah. what I mean? Yes. So, but that, I hope they don't. I mean, I two weeks out would be two weeks out would be just devastating. It'd be rough. It'd be be so really, bad. really rough. Yeah. It'd be so bad. And speaking of the C word, COVID, um, Lake Orion cross country men's team has been impacted by COVID. So one of their top runners was out. Ooh. The last Invitational, right? right. Uh, they ran at Mott, the Mott Invitational. So it's it's still there, it's everyone, still there. right? It's still out there. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the, the teams are still on the lookout for You got to watch out. You have to be cautious. Yes, you do. Because you it, can be it can still what impact what these kids too. are doing, right? Yes, it does. You know what I mean? Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, I don't know if you heard that. Yeah, I so that was a late uh, edition. So... Yeah, it's uh, it was it was an interesting. They still performed well because they're solid. Mm-hmm. They we got depth. They have depth, uh, just a ton of depth. But it's one of those things that you have to be aware. It's still there. I am right? encouraging you know, teams be on the workout for COVID. Yeah, get be those the uh, to follow the rules and follow be rules, be mindful. Vaccinated. Right, get vaccinated. Absolutely. Um, let's go to the picks now. Um, we got this is we're gonna go blue first. Um. Troy Pontiac, if these two teams were to play, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Pontiac, of course, was impacted by the Kobe case. Um, yeah. If these two play, does Pontiac have enough to beat Troy? No. Troy Troy is in, is kind of clicking. They are clicking. Their final three games are Athens, Olympia Hills, and Berkeley. After the Pontiac match. After the Pontiac game. Tough games. <laughs> Right, so they they need this one, they right, to keep one. the momentum going. Right. To keep it going. Uh, so yeah, I'm Troy. Yeah, I'm locked in Troy as well. Um, probably the most interesting one out of the dock in the blue. Um, we got let's go Berkeley Avondale first. It's Berkeley's homecoming taking on Avondale. Um, yeah, Avondale he, came to life a, a week ago, twenty-one nothing over Ferndale. Is that just if a Herzog blip? Come, if Herzog comes back. That's going to be a tight game for Berkeley. You think so? I think it'll be a tight game for them. I still think Berkeley's going to win, but I think if Herzog comes back, that game's tighter than the experts think. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to take a page out of your book and say Berkeley rolls. Ooh. Regardless. And they have that game with the Loney Clarence for Lumen, and then they still got to play Troy, and then yeah, they got some teams coming up. But I think uh, Berkeley's on a mission. I, mm-hmm. I you know, uh, having depth, like you said, you, now you have one way defensive players. You keep Sabah them fresh. Daniels has been really, really running huge. backs been good, right? Mm-hmm. I think Berkeley rolls. Okay, and then let's go to the, probably this is the most interesting game, and I want to talk a little more about this game. Okay, Royal Farmington, uh, Royal Oak at Farmington. This one has been two <laughs> teams that are just the big question mark teams, right? Question like, mark what's teams. going on? What's Who going are on? they? Who are they? I mean, Farmington. We thought coming into the year, you know, that being in the blue would help them out. But yeah, I didn't it think hasn't. That, no, and I don't. I didn't think they would have this much trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, familiar coach coming in. You know, it's not yeah. a, a complete regime it's change. Not a complete regime change. No. So. Uh, I'm going to say Farmington by three. Over Royal Oak. Yes. I'm going to take the flip side. I'm going to take Royal Oak because they haven't played in a week. The question for Coach Ray McMahon is going to be this. Is your team either going to be coming in well-rested or are you going to be coming in rusty? Rusted? Yeah. So <laughs> that is the big, big question I have with Royal yeah. Oak. Um. Last week, you know, let's not forget, you know, we talked about it earlier in the interview with Coach Shields. Um, but I think when you look at this game, if Jesse Hosington plays well, this team's got a shot. For Farmington, Jacob Sanders has to play well. It's a battle of two good running backs. You've got Makai Jenkins at Royal Oak, and then you have um, Jacob Sanders at Farmington. For Farmington, Dominic Peschel's the key because he has the he has the makeup, yeah, but he hasn't delivered. So when you really look at this game, it's who delivers. It's who delivers, but also the defense for Farmington. I mean, what what are they? Yeah, that's the big question. Right? He had forty one last week against Bloomfield Hills, and then yeah, 
you're going from C.J. Jackson to Hudson Seidel. You know what I mean? That's going to be interesting. I'm still picking for him. <laughs> I'm still because picking I think, Royal. I think there's rust. I, I think there may be rust. Mm-hmm. I think so, too. Um, but I'm going to take Royal Oak in this one. I'm, I'm going to take right. the ladder. I'm going to take Royal Oak. Okay. Um, you know, so that'll make that'll be really interesting there. Okay. Um, Ferndale at Wald Lake Western. Ooh. Wald Lake Western, if you read the Oakland Press and what they're coming, they're coming off of a really difficult loss to Milford. Three touchdowns in the final minute. Oh, man. Kickoff return for a uh, they had a punt return, a kickoff return for a touchdown for Wild Lake Western. Milford scored late, took the lead. Byronson took the kickoff back, and then three plays. What? Milford's in the end zone. Corey Thoreau, I um, wow. heard, was not a happy camper with his team. How could you be? How, I mean, like, we know about, we know Coach Thoreau when he was at Farmington. Yes. Now he's the coach at Wild Lake Western. I mean, Ferndale. They've been well. Ferndale has been really has, surprising. Yes, uh, but they got shut out against Avondale, Avondale who's yep. been struggling before mm-hmm. their the big name yep. comes back, right? Yep. Um, I, I don't think Ferndale gets the dub against Wild Lake West. Yes, you think Wild Lake Western is really ticked off? Well, yeah, <laughs> especially with how they played against um against Milford. Yes, Western still has some discipline issues they got to address. I taught. I heard from my source about Wild Lake Western. Okay, that they still have some issues they got to address. Discipline, mentally. Um, they still got talent. Let's not forget they got talent. But I don't think anybody in the Lakes Valley thought Wild Lake Western would be. I think you know would be this down. You know, when you yeah. look at obviously South Lions and playing really good football. Yeah. You look at um. You know, Milford's been a surprise. Obviously, um, now you look at, you still have um, Waterford Motson playing better. Kettering picked up their first win yep. last week as Wild Lake Central. Um, but I'm going to take Wild Lake West for this reason. Because of Corey Thrush. He knows the OA. He knows the blue. He knows what Ferndale has. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it's because of coaching. I think Wild Lake West would win that. All righty. Okay, now let's go from the blue to the white. Um, Oak Park and Seahome. Um, two teams trying to find a way. I yeah. Mean, Seahome, we know they're winless right now. And Oak got Park, shut out by Adams yeah, in a big way. Oak Park was upset by Groves. So this yeah, one... but Groves got a big piece of the puzzle back. Yeah, Jane and Megan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I think Oak Park takes it. Seahome has just got a couple flat tires right now, and they can't find a service station with an air compressor. They're having a hard time. Yeah. I would have to go. I would have to go with that same statement you just made. All right. I am taking um Oak Park. Oak Park. Yep. Most in- two interesting games in the um white this week. Rochester goes to Beverly Hills. This one's interesting <laughs> because Rochester. This has got let down written all over it for Rochester. <laughs> it does. And then on Groves' side, Jaden Magnum's back. Um, they've won two straight. I mean. Is grow are they is back? Groves are back? they back? That's the big question. Is Groves back? And running up against Rochester. And Rochester is taking red hot. down a quality they took down North, North Farmington. Farmington. Is Rochester? Uh, would you trade? This is one of those. Um, this is a pick'em. It is. Um, but I've been picking Rochester. I I didn't pick them last week, and I got burned. Um, but I'll pick them this week. Rochester, I think they go in. You think in, they go in the Beverly Hills? I and beat think them. they go in, and they win. I think it's uh, going to be a seven-point game. I'm going to take Rochester as well, but I think this is going to be a much closer game. I think this is a 34-31 game. I think Blano is the difference maker here. It's in a lot this of one. points. Groves is not. I mean, Blano, I mean, the guy's a touchdown machine. He is, yes. Blano is a touchdown machine. I mean, he... Passing, rushing, you name mm-hmm. it. Yep. Pick your poison, as A lot say. of it, Alex Blano, and I got to give Coach Eric Vernon a lot of credit. I'm going to take Rochester in this one. Um, tight. And then you have Adams at North at Ron Holland. Adams is rolling, man. I, I, I'm really high on Adams. You don't give North a chance in this game. Uh, I'll give him a chance, but even I think... though they went last year and beat Adams at at um, on a gamble by Tony Petrino last. Sweet year. revenge. Sweet revenge. Adams. 
yeah, I can see that happening. Um, to me, Adams looks like a state championship contender. I'm not being mean to you. They are a sleeper. Why be mean to me? I picked them too. (laughs) They are a sleeper in the state. We're at 55. Sleeper in the state this year. Let's go to the red now. Yeah. Um, we'll talk the big one in a minute. Clarkson West Bloomfield. Yes. Um, Oxford A and T. This one's interesting. Oxford A and T. I'm high on Oxford. I think they are clicking. Mm Mm-hmm. And Oxford gets a dub. A and T's got the pieces. A and T's got the quarterback. I don't trust that line one bit. I trust Brady Carpenter. I trust the Oxford's line. I trust Trent. I trust Trent Muir. I trust. Um, I trust what they're doing. Yes. I like Mitchell Viviano. I think he's gonna have a big game in that one. And they're all in. And they're all in. And I think Oxford's gonna roll down to Southfield and get themselves a big W. Going back north up seventy five to M twenty four. And I think, and, I, and I'm telling you, I really love this Oxford team. So do I. I really do. Even though the yellow helmets are really interesting. <laughs> it always comes back to the unis, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. <laughs> um, All right, next Lake one. Orient, Stony Creek. This is, uh, this is going to be an interesting game. Lake Orient's going to be fighting for their lives for this one. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is, that's at home, right? That's at home. Yeah. So, at, at Lake Orient. So, um, I don't know. Uh. Stony with that ball control, and uh, if Lake Orion can't get their offensive si- situated right, right away out of the gate, they're going to have a hard time. I think I think Stony's going to take it because they are going to keep the possessions away from Lake Orion. I'm going to take the flip side here. I'm going to take Lake Orion. This is a style Lake Orion can play. They have played the style before, and they have won. I really think it's going to be a time possession crunch game. But Lake Orion Absolutely. is a dangerous team with nothing to lose. Their back is against the wall, back and they are hungry. The and they are hungry. Stony Creek is due for a letdown. I think the Dragons get this one. I think they do. And then the last game, this one's a big one. Is this a pick'em game, this Sam? This is Clarkson heads to the swamp. This is basically a pick'em game. It's, it's a- West Bluefield's homecoming. It's. This is going to be Always really... Always exciting when these two get together. I think this game... I don't know if this is not Valley Sports Detroit or not. I don't know. Ooh. Um, if it is, if it is, That you would know, be a good one to have That would be a good one to it. have, yeah. Yeah. Um, see... <sighs> wow. It's a toughie. Uh, I want to say Clarkston. Just because... Clark... Clark... Clark. Running the ball. Can you stop him? I don't think you can stop him. I'm flipping it. I'm taking Ooh, West Bloomfield. Really? Because of Amir Herring's going to have a big game up front. I really think this is Raekwon Nance's party. You know, this is his get-together party. Okay. I think this is his, um, you know, everybody talks about Tatum. Everybody talks about Morgan. Everybody talks about, but Raekwon Nance is probably the most. I've, we've seen flashes what he can yes, do. Yes, yes. But I think when you look at West Bloomfield, this is a, if this is a get party, a get together party for him. You know what I mean? A breakout game. You know, for him, this is it to go up against that defense. And I still got questions about Clarkson's defense. I think their defense is going to do. Ju- I think West Bloomfield is going to do just enough. You think so? Okay. It's at home, it's in the swamp, it's homecoming. You know, it's homecoming. Yes. So give me the Lakers. All right. 24-21. They should, they're motivated at the last year's overtime loss, and we know what happened with West Bluefield after that game. Absolutely. They tied them. They did. So we'll see what happens <laughs> going forward. Um, good games, good games. Mm-hmm. I'd like to thank Coach Sean Shields for being on the pod this week, um, obviously, so we'll keep an eye on what everything's going around the league. Um, stay safe. Um, get vaccinated, and, um, you know, and stay safe, everybody. Absolutely. Thanks, Sam. Yep. Away Now is produced by Sammy Terramina, and the views on this show are his and mine alone. If you'd like to make your own podcast, give Owen TV a call at 248-393-1060. Individual classes are now enrolling. Come on, make a show, will ya? Also, get out there and support these student athletes in person. Some great games coming up. We'll see you next week. See ya! See ya!